Very few video game franchises are as widely celebrated and culturally dominant as Pokemon. It's been more than 20 years since Pokemon Red, Green, and Blue versions first hit the scene, and many of the first children who engage in this massive series are adults now. Thousands of grown men and women still love Pokemon, and for good reason. The universe of every title is vibrant and optimistic, the games are easily accessible, and the Pokemon themselves are famously lovable in their designs. Ask anyone who's played a Pokemon game to name a favorite, and chances are you'll get an immediate, passionate response. Many of these adults still care very much about these games and the universe within them, as was demonstrated by the phenomenal success of Pokemon Go on high school campuses and in college towns. To an adult, though, the games really aren't that hard. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It would be ridiculous for Game Freak to start aiming its flagship franchise at anything other than this younger, less experienced demographic. The fact remains, though, that any grown adult with a type chart and any ounce of forethought can easily beat a Pokemon game in maybe a dozen hours. Branding solves every challenge the game throws at a player, and the prevalence of such thorough resources as Bulbapedia and Smogon means that building a powerful team is easy. While the game still represents a good exercise in strategy and puzzle solving for its younger audience, grown adults looking to replicate their childhood experiences with the game might find themselves bored, unenthusiastic, looking for the spark of challenge and camaraderie that made the game so entrancing as a kid. The simple fact is that finding that sense of challenge within Pokemon has become more difficult. At least, it used to be, until the Nuzlocke challenge. The Nuzlocke Challenge is the name given to a series of rules and stipulations enforced by the player on themselves during a playthrough designed to make the base game denser through the implementation of higher stakes. It was developed by a webcomic artist of the same name and quickly exploded in popularity following his release of his first fictionalized account of his experiences in comic form titled Pokemon Hard Mode. It's a simple concept at its face, an honor code system designed to raise the base game stakes and force the player to really strategize. While many optional rules have been added to the system to flesh out the experience, the real meat of the challenge comes from its three core rules. One, the player can only catch the first Pokemon encountered on each route. Two, the player must nickname every Pokemon, enforcing a stronger connection with their team. Three, and the most game-changing rule of Nuzlocke, any Pokemon that faints for any reason is considered dead and must be released. It's far from impossible to win, of course, especially if the player isn't averse to a little grind fest now and again, but that doesn't mean that the Nuzlocke challenge can't be completely infuriating if it's approached wrong. In fact, it commonly is. RNG runs rampant in Pokemon's combat system, and random crits, especially in earlier titles, often make or break a run. Preparation is key. If the player isn't prepared for every trainer in their path or for any of the weird tricks up an enemy's sleeve, then they will suffer casualties. They will lose their ace to a wild Geodude that they didn't predict new explosion. They will have their starter trapped and killed by a Wobbuffet with Shadow Tag Encounter. They will spend hours and hours leveling up a Baneary, pacing the thing back and forth with a Soothe Bell and force feeding it berries and buying it massages until it finally loves you enough to be a low punny, only to lose it almost immediately afterward because you forgot Fantina's Miss Magus new Psybeam. <sighs> Yeah, I'm still mad about that one. The beauty of the Nuzlocke challenge isn't necessarily its difficulty, though. The possibility of losing a Pokémon forever is important because it forces you to care for your team in a way that you're just not motivated to in the base game. In addition to this, the fact that one can't exactly hunt down the coolest or most viable Pokémon and use them means that the player has to work not with a core of six awesome aces, but a lovable band of misfits. And if the documentary Bad News Bears taught us anything, it's that a ragtag crew of underdogs is more interesting. Limits breed creativity, necessity creates ingenuity, Attempting the Nuzlocke Challenge opens the player's eyes to a world of uses for all the less memorable Pokémon out there. Pokémon's magic is the titular monsters themselves. I mean, of course they're popular, there are just over 802 individual Pokémon out there, and nearly every single one of them is overflowing with immediate, vibrant character, other than a few exceptions. There's a Pokémon for everyone out there. If you play any of the games long enough, child or not, you'll find yourself growing more and more attached to certain members of your team. Maybe it's a Feebas that took you three hours of grinding to catch and another six to finally evolve into a Milotic. Maybe it's the Onyx that carried you in your first fight through Whitney. Maybe it's even a Dunsparce. I don't know why you'd connect with a a Dunsparce, but hey, there's probably someone out there who did, and I'm happy for them. You see, when you're young, making these connections is a much more rapid and enthusiastic process. To a kid, the challenges of Pokémon seem more insurmountable, the stakes more daunting, and the partners that help you overcome these perceived obstacles seem that much more like real, valued friends. Before Nuzlocke, I had no idea how much potential some of the more conventionally weak Pokémon had. Butterfree, for instance, went from an overlooked early-game bug type to a valuable member of my team once I was forced to find its strengths. Specifically, Butterfree's awesome at hamstringing problematic opponents with sleep or poison effects. 
My favorite Pokemon of all time quickly shifted from the ones I thought looked coolest to the ones that I had fond memories of, the ones that I worked in tandem with to overcome stacked odds and grave stakes. That's the beauty of the Nuzlocke challenge. It embodies the whole point of Pokemon more than the base games do themselves. Pokemon are not to be used as tools, interchangeable and expendable and taken for granted. They're supposed to be partners, valued allies, friends. We knew this as kids, and that's what made the game so great back then. But sometimes as grown adults, we need a bit of an incentive to remember that. The Nuzlocke challenge is so malleable that every individual can add, subtract, or adapt rules to change this new level of experience for any veteran Pokemon players who may have completed each entry several times throughout the years. As randomized as any Pokemon playthrough can be, and as much as any individual may love the Pokemon games for what they are and what they've always been, the Nuzlocke Challenge is the perfect example of optional fan improvement to an experience. This honor system inclusion of new interesting restrictions forces the player to look at the world of Pokemon in a new way. It revitalizes the experience, not only by adding a new layer of difficulty to keep things fresh, but by demanding that the player accept that each Pokemon is valuable in some way. That idea that even the stat-deficient or unfortunately typed or under-evolved Pokemon deserve to be in that little victory screen at the end of the Hall of Fame isn't only the best part of the Nuzlocke challenge, it's the entire point of Pokemon in the first place. It's the reason it's so beloved. The Nuzlocke challenge stays true to the core of what makes Pokemon special while shaving off the layers of staleness or boredom that a veteran player might have developed. It takes a magical series aimed at children and turns it into a refreshing challenge for older fans while never overriding the spirit that made the games popular with that crowd in their own childhoods. That is what's so great about the Pokemon Nuzlocke Challenge. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this slightly different episode of What's So Great About Gaming. My name's Ethan, and I want to thank you all for having me. The Nuzlocke Challenge, as well as the entire Pokemon universe, has always been something that meant a lot to me, growing up and to this day. We'd like to know what it means to you, too. If you have any games, series, or even playstyles of games like the Nuzlocke Challenge that you think are truly great, why don't you share them with us? Our next episode will be over Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, and how it compares to the modern Call of Duty scene and its constant decline in critical scores. If you want to be one of the first to see that episode and be a part of our community here, make sure to hit subscribe so you're always part of our next big discussion. Thanks again for watching. Now go play a great game. We'll see you next time.